Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I am Merle Bland, the candidate's forum moderator for the Wyandotte County primary election 2021. I am with Business West, the lead sponsor of the forum, along with Kansas City, Kansas Community College. The focus of the forum today will be on races from the unified commissioner and mayor and chief executive officer. Mary Rupert of the Wyandotte Daily will be asking the questions. Candidates will have two minutes for opening remarks. Candidates are reminded this is not a debate and candidates are urged to stick with the issues. First, we will hear from candidates from Unified Commissioner at Large, Second District. The first candidate that we will hear from is Tom Burroughs, the incumbent. Tom, you have two minutes to make introductory remarks. Thank you, Merle. Well, it's a privilege to be here today, and, and I want to thank the organizations for hosting us today, Business West, in, in cooperation with the Kansas City, Kansas Community College. It's always a pleasure to uh, be before the public and let them have an opportunity to see our platform. Uh, I, I'm not a stranger to the political environment in Wyandotte County. I have had the privilege of serving the third con uh, commission district the uh, at-large District 2 for the past three years, and I'm looking forward to serving the next four years, provided the voters determine that uh, I warrant that re-election. I've been, I'm a Wyandotte County resident. I'm born and raised, educated uh, in Wyandotte County, uh, been married to the same lady for 40 years, and I have served my community in multiple capacities. I've sat on numerous boards, uh, throughout the community and over the years have represented this community in the great state of Kansas, serving uh, not only as a state rep, but as leader of the uh, Democratic Caucus and served in leadership for six years. Uh, I stand ready to assist in any way that I can and address the questions in the platform that I have here this, this afternoon that I know will be presented. And uh, as I stated, uh, I look forward to the opportunity to answer those questions. Thank you. Now we'll go to our next opponent, Ned Kelly. Ned, you have two minutes. All right. Thank you so very much for hosting us. Uh, first of all, my heart goes out to Claudine. I know we're all wishing her a, a very speedy recovery. So also, first of all, I suppose that would be second of all then, the spelling of my name is Kelly, K-E-L-L-E-Y. I like to make that very clear that that is different from the spelling of the governor of Kansas, and I am not related to the governor of Kansas. So if you're looking for me, remember K-E-L-L-E-Y. You could find me on Facebook at Kelly for Wyandotte. Check me out there. Twitter, I'm at Ned Kelly, N-A-P. I have, well, uh, let me first say I'm a small business owner along with my girlfriend, Mary Girt who happens to be running for BPU. You need to check her out as well, please. And a friend of ours, we own an aerial photography company. And that is really taking off, pun intended. Get it? Because of the, the drones. And I have been an active member of the Libertarian Party for well over 20 years. Uh, most recently as chair of the Libertarian Party of Kansas. We have faced in this country and in this county a crisis of liberty over the past year and a half. They told us where we could go, what businesses could stay open and which ones had to close, how many people could gather together. They even had mandates about what you had to wear on your face. And now they're trying to tell you what you have to do with your body for your own health choices. Uh, Wyandotte County had the opportunity, as did all counties in Kansas, to come up with our own set of restrictions, and we should have, and we should have been much more lenient than the state mandates. My goal is to maintain your health freedom, your personal freedom, and your financial freedom next time and going forward. Thank you. Now we will go to the questions from the panelists. Our panelists are Mary Rupert from the Windout Daily Online and Elnora Jefferson from Groundwork Northeast Revitalization Group. We'll start with Mary Rupert and she will ask questions of Tom Burroughs. Tom? 
Um, what are your top priorities in spending the $87 million the UG is receiving in federal funds? Thank you, Mary. That's a great question. That's a question a number of us in the commission have asked one another because I believe I may have my uh, rathers and the commission mem other commission members will have theirs. But first and foremost, we had frontline health workers and public safety individuals that put their lives and limbs in great uh, harm's way during the pandemic and forced overtime mandatory service during the pandemic. And I have uh, advocated already that a part of that money go to uh, ensure that there was a bonus paid to those workers to recognize the mandated overtime and work schedules that they were put forward. I think it would send a, a strong message to those that gave up their uh, service to us during the pandemic that we are partners in this process. That is the number one, uh, one, one of the items. Number two, the other items would be go to backfill some of the lost revenue that we've had in the criteria set out by the federal government in, re in reference to the ARPA funds. And we, as a commission, we are running through those collectively now, and we will have full discussions about how we want to spend those, how we want to spend those dollars. Ned Kelly, your response to the same question. So you, you're asking me how I want to spend your money. You're asking me how I want the UG, the Unified Government of Wyandotte County, to spend the people's money. The short answer is I don't. I want to make it as difficult as possible for the UG to spend the, tax paper, the taxpayers' money. If we can't give it back to them outright, I want to save it as much as possible, reduce as many spending projects as possible uh, to make to make that um, to make those funds last so that we can cut taxes going forward as as much as possible. There's too much cronyism. There's too much nepotism. Having having these huge million dollar projects, multi multi million dollar projects, um, and then having us fight over who gets the, um, to, to benefit from it. It's, it's ridiculous. As a libertarian, I want you to keep your own money. Uh, I want you to make those decisions for yourself. Spend it locally. Yes, we need baseball fields. We need swimming pools. We need programs, uh, parks, and stuff like that. But we can do a much better job locally, voluntarily, YMCA, community organizations, and things like that rather than funneling the, this money into huge corporations. It's not capitalism, by the way. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. It's crapitalism. That's when you take cronyism and add it to capitalism. You get crapitalism. And we, we in the uh, UG, you know, mm. Wyandotte County, is probably the epitome of, of that showing up here. So how do I want to spend your money? I don't. I want you to keep your own darn money. Thank you. Okay. Next, we'll go to Elnora. Elnora, your question, please. Okay, thank you and very much, Merle. So good afternoon. Uh, this is my question. When presented a proposal that includes using money to pay down the debt or allocate money for social or civic needs, what factors must be weighed in that decision? And we'll, we'll go to Ned Kelly. Ned, your response first. So when choosing whether to allocate funds to pay down debt or to go to social programs and projects, again, I want you to keep your funds. I want, to keep, I want you to keep your money. So that means paying down debt. The more we can pay down debt and not rely on funds coming in from property taxes, or even funds coming in from the, the feds, you know, the federal government giving us free money. Uh, the more we can wean ourselves off of that now, the better positioned we'll be for coming, whatever is to come over the next couple of years, whether that's going to be um, a mild uh, meltdown and downturn in, in the economy, or a large economic event, um, perhaps with, with high inflation, if, if not runaway inflation. So that is coming. It's just a question of when it's coming for the whole, for the whole country. 
Uh, and so Wyandotte County is not going to be a, immune to that by any means. So the quicker we can wean ourselves off of that, uh, the better we'll be when it comes. Oh, and on that idea of um, free money from, from the feds, the reason I say it's not free is because we pay for it. We pay for it with our income taxes or we pay for it through inflation. You know, the, the feds are either going to keep spending trillions and trillions and trillions of runaway debt themselves. That has to come somewhere. That, that has to be accounted for one way or another. Either they default, uh, either austerity programs or inflation. And the, in other words, the spending power of your dollars that you have gets whittled away to basically nothing. So those are my priorities in general. Thank you very much. Tom Burroughs, your response to that question. Thank you, Merle. And if I may, Elnora, could you restate that question? I want to make sure I heard specifically the question that was asked. Sure, I'd be happy to. When presented a proposal that includes using money to pay down the debt or allocate money for social or civic needs, what factors must be weighed? Thank you, uh, Ms. Jefferson, for uh, restating the question. I'm assuming we're talking about general fund dollars and not the ARPA relief dollars, uh, because I know the pr prior question, if it's general fund dollars, we are obligated by the, as a local unit of government uh, to provide services through statute, through local ordinance, and by law. Those things have to be funded first and foremost. Paying down debt as, a, as many of us dealing with the budget, I'm a fiscal conservative, and I, it's my intent always to look out for how we can lower the debt in Wyandotte County. I have advocated for continued uh, reduction in any debt service we have by either refinancing that debt at a lower rate or continuing to pay cash for as many projects as we have. That's the consideration I give. Civic engagement, civic issues have to be weighed on the uh, cost associated to that once these other expenses are identified and uh, paid for. We do have an emergency fund set aside in our reserves in the budget to address some of those issues. And we advocate for those individually as commissioners when those issues come forward. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We'll go to Mary Rupert for our next question. Mr. Bland. I was wondering if uh, if Mr. Rios would like to ask a question. Actually, I'm so sorry uh, to interrupt. My name is Brittany Armstrong. I um, jumped in on behalf of Claudine Sanders. Um, I was told to jump on. Uh, there's a little bit of confusion. So I just wanted to know if I'd be allowed to participate as well on behalf of her. We'll allow you at the end of our session to make introductory remarks and closing remarks, but you will not be allowed to respond to questions. Understood. Thank you so much. Okay. JD, are you there? Yes. Okay. Do you have a question? Okay. <laughs> Good afternoon. Uh, my question is, what do you know about the community-led safe and welcoming ordinance and municipal ID, and what is your stance in support or non-support of this ordinance? We'll start with Tom Burroughs. Tom? Well, thank you. That's a question that's been asked multiple times, and I know it's an issue that's very important to, uh, air, to not only our community, but those outside our community watching to see what we do. And it, this started with me four years ago in, in the state capitol. I had a chance to meet with the ACLU about municipal ID. And it, it's continued to grow and, and take on a, a different name. And uh, in, in reference, now they call it the safe and welcoming. I have worked closely with the ACLU from the former director, uh, uh, Mr. Micah, all the way down to the present director. And I can't remember the, the lady was just appointed. But you know, when I first became a commissioner, I did bring in the ACLU to meet with our police chief and our sheriff and a few of the commissioners and had this discussion initially, because I think it's important that we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Other communities have implemented the municipal ID as well as safe and welcoming. Locally, Roland Park has introduced one and they they have one on the books. And I think it's important that we look at what other communities do to have that uniform 
presence all across the metropolitan area. If we're going to be part of a safe and welcoming uh, community, we, sh we should it make it as easy and as compliant as possible so that there's no confusion transferring between, even though the municipal ID will only be particular to our community, it's important that law enforcement understand that as we transition between community to community, it be transparent and uh, uh, re reciprocity in recognizing those municipal IDs. Uh, as I stated, Roland Park, uh, Arkansas recently in introduced one with the help of their police chief. So it it's a way to one, continue to build trust and send the message that we value you, we welcome you, and you are part of the community. Thank you. Ned Kelly, your response to that question. Sure. And thank you, Mr. Rios, for the question. Safe and welcoming has two parts to it. The first part being a, a local ID, a municipal ID, and the second part being basically a non-compliance with the, the feds, uh, ICE. Let me start with that second part, because I am wholeheartedly in favor of that. Even if we don't end up passing safe, safe and welcoming, I would love for Wyandotte County and Kansas City, Kansas, to become perhaps you could call it a sanctuary city, a sanctuary county, where we don't let, don't let the feds in, don't let them come harass our folks, whether they're considered citizens or non-citizens. I am all in favor of keeping those federal agents out and not, you know, have, you know, what that would look like is uh, hopefully our sheriff's department and our police departments would protect individual rights. And while we're at it, let's keep the F FBI out, the alcohol, tobacco, firearms out, the um, DEA out, you know, those are unconstitutional laws to begin with, whether they're unconstitutional drug laws or gun laws, keep the feds out of it. As far as the first part and having a municipal ID, I totally get the, the need for it and the reason behind it in helping, fo you know, foreigners uh, and houseless folks get get a foothold and get some traction so that they can from there having a, a, a local ID end up getting some form of state ID which is needed to to enter into the system and and I am super hesitant though because you know these things start off innocent enough but it they they escalate and what's next uh, are is every citizen and every person in Wyandotte going to be required to have this and is it going to be used to track everyone so i'm very hesitant okay our next question will come from mary rupert mary yes um do you support a department of justice investigation into the kansas city kansas police department and we'll start with ned kelly ned Yes. Yes. Anything that can be done to, to help make folks, um, law enforcement, uh, more accountable. Yes, I'm all, all for it. Now, would that simply be the, you know, the watchdogs checking in on themselves? I don't know. I don't know to what degree the, the cronyism and protectionism uh, and the code of, you know, you, you don't... Um, you don't report a brother law enforcement, how, how much the connections go from the, the DOJ to uh, local police department. But if it, if it can possibly lead to um, more accountability, then that's a great idea. What we need is to make it much, much easier for people to report things uh, up and down, whether it's uh, someone um, making a statement about uh, their fellow officer or their boss, uh, anywhere up and down so that they can report malfeasance or abuse and not worry about being targeted themselves. We also, uh, of course, need to do away with some of the institutional things. Um, let's start with the law, the, the war on drugs. If we could just at least legalize marijuana like everywhere else is, uh, that would get police, it, it, it would stop them from uh, getting into people's business for, for no reason and, and just focus on real crime uh forfeit af forfeit as i'm sorry <laughs> civil asset forfeiture civil asset forfeiture where they can take your your money your car your property even without arresting you even uh, without a trial and just and take your your stuff um 
And what's the other one? Immunity. Qualified immunity. Definitely need to end qualified immunity on every level. Thank you. And your response, Commissioner? Tom? Thank you. I your response. To thank, thank you. I've had the uh, opportunity to visit with our new police chief. I believe he is very qualified and I will support the chief in whatever action he chooses to move forward. I do know that uh, he needs an opportunity to uh, get settled in his new position. I have, in, as commissioner, supported the Conviction Integrity Unit and will continue to support that. I uh, have strongly uh, supported community policing along with the PAL Center, and I would support the uh, Chief Oakman's cold case squad. I believe as the new police chief, he has to, uh, should be warranted the opportunity to determine what investigation of his agency, if he feels it's necessary, is warranted. I would also state that uh, there is a present investigation going on that has been continued. Uh, I know it's been out there for quite a while, and I know the public has been asking those questions and why something hasn't been uh, moved forward. But I do know that, uh, as we know publicly, that the KBI and the FBI have continued their investigations. I don't believe that uh, I can state anything other than what others have read in the, uh, in the paper or in the media has been shared. That uh, as far as calling a criminal justice in, that I believe the legal departments that are doing the investigation will make the determination as to what is necessary. Okay. Now we will move to uh, Brandy Armstrong, who is speaking for Claudine Sanders, who is a candidate. And she will present opening remarks and closing remarks for Claudine Sanders. Brandy. Thank you so much. And I want to thank Business West for putting on this forum and allowing me the opportunity to speak on behalf of Claudine. Um, my name is Brandy Armstrong, and I am the campaign manager for Claudine Sanders. Um, she would have loved to have been at this forum tonight. And if we make it past the primary, I'm happy to announce she has been released from the hospital. So hopefully she will be able to make all of the forums from here on out. Um, but, uh, and I also wanna, cause she is all the hospital, I just wanna inform everyone, she will be ready to serve if elected in November. But let me give you a few reasons why you should vote for Claudine Sanders in the primary on August 3rd. As witnessed through her recovery, Claudine is a fighter and she channels and uses her fiery energy to fight and give back to her community every chance she gets. She's lived in Wyandotte County for over 20 years and has lived everywhere from 5th to 55th Street. So she understands the different challenges and successes that each area of Wyandotte County faces. Her life here in Wyandotte has been an active one. She has been the secretary and then the president of the Stony Point Hunters Glen Neighborhood Association. She's the current vice president of the Armadale Renewal Association, a member of the Armadale Master Plan Steering Committee, a member of District Attorney Mark Dupree's Community Liaison Board. And during the COVID pandemic, you could find Claudine donating as much time and energy as she could to as many food banks as she could. And if you look on her Facebook, you can actually find pictures where she has like icicles on her lashes from one here this winter. Now, I'm not here to make any promises on behalf of Claudine because she wouldn't do that herself. Claudine understands that if she is elected, she is one of 10 commissioners plus the mayor and administrator and nothing can happen unilaterally. But here's what Claudine would promise. Claudine would promise that she would push for the passage of safe and welcoming as soon as possible. Claudine would push to take a hard look at the assessor's office and how property taxes are assessed here in Wyandotte County and how our assessors are trained and the standards that they are using. Claudine wants to make sure that our KCKPD officers and sheriff's office are funded, but that the unified government is also spending money on social programs that make it to where the police are focusing on their jobs, which is to solve crimes and protect us from violent crimes, not to be mental health crisis counselors. Our officers should be focused on that. So Claudine wants to improve the different local community resources that we have. That's why you should vote Claudine Sanders on August 3rd or in advance, um, because she is going to be the candidate. She was, as she says herself, she may not be from the dot, but she is for the dot. And that's why I urge you to vote Sanders on August 3rd. Thank you. Now we'll move to closing remarks. 
for the at-large district. And we'll start with Ned Kelly. Ned? Thank you. Again, thank you all for hosting this event. And best wishes for, for health for Claudine. Thank you, Brandy, for, for being here. And again, I want to mention that the spelling of my last name is K-E-L-L-E-Y, no relation to the Kansas governor. Find me at Kelly for Wyandotte on Facebook or Ned Kelly, N-A-P, on Twitter. Like I said at the beginning, I want to stand for, I will stand for, and I always stand for your freedoms, all of your freedoms all of the time, your personal freedoms, meaning you have the right to do what you want with your own body, your own life, and others, other adults. You have the right to do what you want with your own money, your own finances. I'll always stand for your financial freedom. There are so many businesses impacted by the so-called pandemic, not so much by that, but by government's response to it, of course, the lockdowns and stipulations about how long you could keep your business open hurt the small business owner, helped the big block, the big box stores and Amazon, of course. And now, of course, when they're having a multi-million dollar advertising campaign for a new technology, um, I really feel sorry for for the big pharma companies out there who, who are just trying to help out. Uh, um, that's some sarcasm there. And your health freedom. Only you have the right to do what you, what you feel is right for your own body. Um, anyone 18 and older, that is. Now, I want to protect your freedom, whether I agree with it or not. There are, there are certain things, whether it's about masks or injections, that I don't think are a very good idea. But I'll protect your right to make that choice for yourself. Thank you. Commissioner, your response. You have one minute. Thank you. Uh, and I, too, want to thank Business West and cooperation with Kansas City, Kansas Community College for hosting this event uh, this yeah. afternoon. Uh, I, I'm a community servant, have been a community servant for the last 30 years. I sit on numerous boards, not-for-profit organizations. I've assisted small businesses. Uh, I've been a, a, my mother ran small businesses when when I was younger, I grew up around small business. I have retired from Colgate Palmolive Company in Kansas City, Kansas, and having served in the legislature for 25 years, uh, doing on the budget committee as well as the tax committee, it has prepared me greatly to serve this local community as a commissioner with an eye on fiscal conservative, as I stated, the fiscal issue. I believe the Wyandotte County taxpayers deserve to have transparency, fiscal accountability, a responsible, responsive government. And it has been my commitment to them the last three years to do just that, even to the point that at times it uh, does chafe some others when I ask the tough questions. But I'm willing to stand and uh, vo vocalize and advocate for those that uh, may not be able to do it for themselves. I would be honored and humbled to again serve as your commissioner at large. I believe that my experiences has prepared me well. And I stand ready to partner with any of those that want to move the community forward. All the leaders that we have in the community have the one thing in common, and that's to serve. And uh, I don't believe a public servant is a bad thing. And I'm very proud of the commitment I have made with some of the uh, notices you see behind me on the wall. Some of the awards I've received is just a small inkling of the commitment I have made to this community and the recognition by others for my service. But I stand ready to, to move forward going into the primary. And But I do need your help. Vote Tom Burroughs, August 3rd primary election. And please return me to serve you in the unified government. Thanks, the candidates for participating.